If you've ever heard the saying, now in your shell, type the following command, and you thought, my shell? Well, what am I, a turtle? <laughs> Here's the thing, you'd be right. I mean, whoa, 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 wait, you're, you're not a turtle. But the term shell is actually derived from that because it provides a protective outer shell for your operating system. Shell is most likely referring to the text-based interface that's used to interact with your operating system. Your OS is in charge of some pretty important tasks like running processes, storing and retrieving your data files, and maintaining devices. The shell is providing you the prompt. You know, that blinky cursor waiting for your input in your terminal application? Your operating system needs to be protected, but it also needs to provide a way for its users to interact with it. Someone needs to start and stop those processes. The shell allows you to start processes, see all the processes that you are running, and even ones that you didn't kick off from the shell. It also allows you to terminate them. It can show you how much memory is being used or how much space is being used by data on your machine and even reorganize your file structure. You can imagine that the shell is kind of like a game master in a turn-based game, like one with dungeons or dragons. The game master controls the rules of the game and you, as a player, make suggestions. If and only if your suggestion is valid, the game master will execute your move and then tell you the results of your action. The master is also responsible for telling you the state of the game if you ask. But one of their more hidden roles, which might not be obvious, is to protect the state of the game, making sure that you don't cheat or ignore the rules of the imaginary universe. Operating systems have a shell by default. Your terminal application will let you choose and configure your shells. But you should know that there are a lot of options out there. So many, in fact, that there is a standard that many are based on. Check the notes for more on this. Some programs, like Git, for example, even install a bit of a half shell. So you can kind of follow along with other tutorials that don't think about Windows. It's like a hero in a half shell. <laughs> Cowabunga. That, that's another turtle joke. I'm sorry. Every shell is a little bit different. They all have slightly different feature sets. Learning how to make use of these different features will save you a lot of time. One in particular that you should get familiar with is command history. Pressing the up arrow key and most shells will retrieve your last command. And most shells provide a way for you to modify the way that they behave and look. Typically, this is in a file so that you can take that configuration with you to new machines and it will always feel the same. You've probably done a tutorial and saw the dollar sign in the prompt. Now, this is the default prompt for the born again shell or bash. And now you also know that bash is a type of shell and not just what you want to do with your head sometimes to the keyboard. Sheesh, don't do that. As a developer, you're going to spend a lot of time in your shell and understanding how to use the niceties of your shell will save you a ton of time. Features like auto completion are lifesavers. As you get more experience, you'll be able to chain your commands together by piping the output of a command into another one as input. Where do you take someone who has been injured in a peekaboo accident? To the ICU. Shells typically provide a scripting language, so you can reuse your commands, share them, and even provide an interactive experience from the command line. There's also custom tools that are built to run in your shell called CLIs or command line interfaces. This makes it easier to run your program from the comfort of your own shell and get all the output that you need. All right, so now that you know about the protective shell around your operating system and have seen them in action, I'd love for you to dive in a little bit deeper. Check the notes for some ways to practice. There are some important things that you should learn about, like the dollar path environment variable, but we discussed that in another video. Speaking of which, if something in here didn't quite make sense to you, make sure to check out our list of ever-expanding developer fundamentals. Chances are we have it covered. And if we don't, please let us know and we'll do our best to get that video for you. Thanks so much for hanging out and we'll see you real soon.